Imagine you've time traveled to Tudor England, how long would you survive? This is not a hypothetical question designed to tickle your fancy for historical fiction. No, it's a serious inquiry into the harsh realities of a time period that's often romanticized in pop culture. Tudor England stretching from 1485 to 1603 was an era of heady excitement, of renaissance vibrancy, and political drama. Yet it was also an era of profound challenges. Surviving in Tudor England was no small feat. It was a time when life was precarious at best, and at worst, brutally short. The very pillars of existence, hygiene, medicine, nutrition, living conditions, and security, were fraught with difficulties that would make the modern mind real. Let's start with a quick introduction to the era. The Tudor period commenced with the ascension of Henry VII to the throne in 1485, marking the end of the bloody Wars of the Roses. It ended with the death of his granddaughter, Elizabeth I, in 1603. This was a transformative period in English history, witnessing the break from Rome, the establishment of the Church of England, the defeat of the Spanish Armada, and the flourishing of English literature with figures like William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe. But behind the glittering facade of royal pageantry and cultural blossoming, the average Englishman and woman faced a daily struggle for survival. Life was a constant battle against disease, malnutrition, abysmal living conditions, and the ever-present threat of violence. The challenges of surviving in Tudor England were many and they were daunting. In this video, we will explore these challenges, not to dampen the allure of the period, but to provide a balanced view of what life was truly like during this fascinating era. We will unravel the trials that the Tudor folk faced, painting a vivid picture of their resilience and their struggle. So brace yourselves, for we're about to dive headlong into a world that's as harsh as it is captivating. Let's delve into the factors that made survival in Tudor England a monumental challenge. First stop on our journey, the streets of Tudor England, a breeding ground for disease. The Tudor era, spanning from the late 15th to the early 17th century, is renowned for its rich history. However, beneath the glamour of Renaissance excitement and dramatic political events, there lurked a less appealing side, the grim reality of hygiene or more accurately, the lack thereof. Imagine the streets, not as we know them today, lined with neat pavements and modern drainage, but as open sewers. The concept of sanitation as we understand it was virtually non-existent. Without a formal sewage system, waste of all kinds found its way onto the streets, turning them into a cesspool of filth. You could say that the streets were not only thoroughfares for people but also for their waste. This lack of sanitation was not just a matter of discomfort or distaste, it had far-reaching implications for public health. The filth and waste that littered the streets became a breeding ground for bacteria and vermin, leading to the rampant spread of diseases. From the bubonic plague to dysentery, the Tudor citizens were under constant threat from a variety of health dangers lurking in their environment. Cleanliness, as we understand it today, was not a priority. The idea of washing hands before a meal or after returning home was alien to them. The absence of awareness about hygiene and the lack of facilities for maintaining cleanliness meant that personal hygiene too was in a sorry state. The struggle for survival in Tudor England was not just against political rivals or economic hardships, it was a daily battle against diseases, many of which were born out of the squalor that characterized the streets and homes. The people of Tudor England lived their lives under the shadow of these diseases, their existence a daily testament to human resilience. Without modern sanitation, disease spread easily, making survival a daily struggle. The plight of hygiene in Tudor England offers a sobering glimpse into a period of history that was as challenging as it was fascinating. Now imagine falling ill in Tudor England, a place where medicine was more of a gamble than a science. In this era, the field of medicine was in its infancy. Medical knowledge was rudimentary at best, with many of the common practices doing more harm than good. Doctors or physicians as they were known were few and far between. They were educated men but their understanding of the human body was limited. They believed in the four humors theory, which stated that the human body was made up of four substances, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. An imbalance in these humors was thought to cause illness. To restore balance, physicians would often resort to bloodletting, a practice where they would cut a vein and let the patient bleed. Bloodletting was thought to remove excess blood, one of the four humors, but this practice often led to infections and even death due to excessive blood loss. 
In addition to bloodletting, purging was another common treatment. This involved making the patient vomit or have diarrhea to cleanse the body. Unfortunately, this method often caused dehydration and weakened the patient further. Herbal remedies were also popular. While some herbs did have medicinal properties, others were harmful or had no effect at all. The lack of standardization meant that treatments varied widely, and what worked for one person might not work for another. Surgery was the last resort, as it was incredibly risky. Surgeons had a basic understanding of anatomy, but lacked the tools and knowledge we have today. Anesthetics were not yet invented, so patients had to endure the pain. Infections were common, and many patients died from what would be considered minor surgeries today. In the face of illness, the lack of effective medical treatment was a death sentence to many. The primitive state of medicine in Tudor England was a stark contrast to our modern understanding of health and disease. It's a sobering reminder of how far we've come and the importance of continued medical research and innovation. Now let's talk about food, or rather, the lack of it. This was a stark reality of life in Tudor England, the struggle for sustenance was real, and it was a daily battle. The majority of the population lived off a limited diet, primarily of bread and cheese. This lack of diversity in their meals was not by choice but rather due to scarcity and the prohibitive cost of other food items. The average Tudor meal was simple and repetitive. Breakfast typically comprised of bread and ale, while dinner, the main meal of the day, included pottage, a type of thick soup made from oats. Occasionally the fortunate ones could supplement their diet with small portions of meat or fish. However for most, this was a luxury they could ill afford. This lack of dietary diversity had severe implications for the health of the Tudor populace. Malnutrition was rampant, with many suffering from scurvy, a disease caused by a deficiency of vitamin C. This was particularly prevalent among the poorer classes, who had little access to fresh fruits and vegetables, the primary sources of this crucial vitamin. The food scarcity was further compounded by periodic famines. Harvest failures due to unpredictable weather patterns led to severe food shortages. These shortages not only drove up the prices of essential food items, but also led to widespread starvation. The years of famine were marked by an increase in mortality rates, as the weak and the poor succumbed to hunger and disease. Furthermore, food preservation techniques were rudimentary at best. Without refrigeration, food spoilage was a common problem, leading to food poisoning and other related illnesses. This only added to the already high mortality rates. So, the daily quest for food was not just about satisfying hunger, it was a fight for survival, a battle against malnutrition and disease. In Tudor England, hunger was a constant companion, making survival a daunting task. Surviving Tudor England was not just about battling hunger and disease, the living conditions were another hurdle. Picture this. Cramped, dark homes, often with entire families sharing a single room. The lack of space and sunlight turned these homes into breeding grounds for disease, making survival even more difficult. Moreover, these houses were constructed from timber, wattle and daub, materials that were hardly weatherproof. Imagine enduring the harsh English winters in a house that could barely keep the wind and rain out. Adding to the misery, these homes lacked proper ventilation and sanitation facilities. The stench of human waste, combined with the smell of burning wood and animal dung used for heating, created an insufferable living environment. In essence, the homes of Tudor England were far from being the safe havens we associate with the term home today, Living conditions were far from ideal, adding another layer to the survival challenge. Lastly, surviving Tudor England wasn't just about battling physical hardships. Personal safety was a constant concern. With crime rates soaring high, it was as if danger had become an omnipresent entity. The roads, frequented by highwaymen and thieves, were a hotbed for treachery and deceit. The law enforcement mechanisms of the time were, to put it mildly, lackluster. There were no established police forces, and the responsibility of maintaining law and order fell on the shoulders of unpaid local officials, known as constables. Their limited resources, coupled with their lack of training, meant that criminal activities often went unchecked. Moreover, the punishment system was brutal and unpredictable, with crimes ranging from theft to treason, often resulting in public executions. This harsh reality bred a culture of fear, where people were constantly on edge, wary of their surroundings and their fellow citizens. In Tudor England, danger lurked around every corner making survival a perilous endeavor. Surviving Tudor England was no easy task as we've seen. It was a time of significant historical importance, filled with the excitement of the Renaissance and dramatic political events. 
However, it was also a period marked by extreme hardship and challenges that made survival a daunting task. Firstly, the woeful state of hygiene was a significant hurdle. The streets were filthy, and the lack of a proper sewage system made the spread of diseases rampant. Imagine a world devoid of the sanitation practices we take for granted today. Secondly, the primitive state of medicine compounded the problem. The doctors of the time lacked the knowledge and resources we have today to diagnose and treat diseases effectively. Illnesses that are easily curable in our times could have spelled certain doom in Tudor England. Thirdly, the struggle for sustenance was a daily reality. The diet was primarily composed of simple foods like bread and cheese. This lack of a balanced diet led to widespread malnutrition and hunger. The abundance of food we enjoy today was a distant dream in Tudor England. Fourthly, the living conditions were harsh. People generally lived in small, dark houses. These cramped and poorly lit spaces were breeding grounds for diseases and significantly shortened lifespans. Finally, the perilous state of security was a constant threat. Crime rates were high and the roads were dangerous. Safety, something we often take for granted, was a luxury in Tudor England. In sum, survival in Tudor England was a daily struggle against poor hygiene, primitive medicine, inadequate nutrition, harsh living conditions, and a lack of security. These challenges made life in this period not just difficult, but often short-lived. Next time you wish to time travel to Tudor England, remember, survival would be your biggest challenge.